gonna be just like senior year except for funner. Hey guys, I'm Kendra. Hi, I'm Resethis, and this week we're talking about a sweet coming of age queer rom com, Love Simon. So happy Pride Month to any LGBTQIA plus listeners. This is our first queer rom-com we're discussing on the pod, and we're so excited to add more to our list in future episodes because there are so many awesome queer love stories that we want to chat about. And even more premiering soon, it's such an exciting time for rom-coms. Oh my gosh! Yes, happy Pride Month, everyone. Of course, Mercedes, we got to kick it off with your celebrity crush of the week. Tell me who you're crushing on this week. Oh my goodness. So Kendra, you were a fan of the show Greek, so I think you might know this guy. He played yes. Calvin on Greek. And he's on this new show now that I started watching called I Love That For You. It's a new comedy series. His name is Paul James. Sorry, everybody. I wasn't even saying his name. <laughs> he plays Jordan on the new show and he's my crush this week. He's been hot since 2007 and I just want everyone to know he's still hot. <laughs> You're about to hate me, Mercedes. I full on met him. I oh, is he nice? Him. He is very nice. He's a Syracuse alum. So back in school. Of course. <laughs> yeah. I can't, you know, I had like this, uh, I had this like event for film students and he came to speak to us. Aww. Very, very nice. Met him. He's an SU alum. Shout out Paul James. So yes, I do know him because I was freaking out. I was like, yeah. oh my God, Greek was my favorite show for the longest time. So. Oh, I love Greek. Good choice this week. We're saying it's good choice. Yeah. Love it. So Peaky Blinders comes back on on June 10th. And I'm freaking out and I'm trying to rewatch all that. So I've watched Peaky Blinders like 11 times, at least seasons one through three. Oh my goodness. Season four, I've watched probably three times, but I'm rewatching it again to prepare for the next season. So Killian Murphy, of course, of course, Thomas Shelby is my celebrity crush this week because he is amazing. I feel like my whole life revolves around him. Like the second time I went to Ireland, I specifically went to Cork to see what place birthed such a beautiful man. Like, <laughs> love Killian Murphy. Everyone watch Peaky Blinders when it comes out. You death. totally not a rom com, but if you like gangster shows, this one is yeah. for you. <laughs> oh my gosh, such a good pick. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, guys, we're gonna move over to the TLDR. We like to recap the movie for anyone who hasn't seen it. Warning: there are spoilers ahead. If you have not seen this movie, you can stream it for free through Freebie on Amazon Prime. Take it away, Mercedes. Yes. So this movie starts off with Simon Spear, played by Nick Robinson who's a teenager who describes his life as totally normal with a good family and his great friends, Nick, Leah, and Abby. But he also has a secret. He's gay and hasn't told anybody. This soon changes when an anonymous confession was posted on online by another closeted gay student at their school under the pseudonym Blue. Using the pseudonym Jacques, Simon emails Blue and tells him he's in the same situation. This begins a constant email back and forth between Simon and Blue, both confiding in one another about their experiences, but still hide their real identity. When an obnoxious boy, Martin, at school discovers the emails, he threatens to out Simon unless he helps him win over Abby. At the same time, Simon is still trying to figure out who Blue is. He guesses it could be Bram, his cool soccer player friend, and a couple other guys. At a football game, Martin asks out Abby in front of everyone at school, and when she rejects him, he becomes the joke at school. On Christmas Eve, he retaliates by anonymously leaking the emails online and outing Simon to everyone. He's unable to reach Blue, and he's ignoring his friends. But Simon does come out to his parents on Christmas, and they're accepting, but it is still a little cute, awkward moment. When school's back in session, Blue is upset about the leak and deletes his email account. Simon's friends are hurt by his lies, and annoying students make homophobic jokes in school. After a couple good conversations with his family, he posts a confession where he apologizes to his friends and asks Blue to meet him on the Ferris wheel at the school carnival. Simon and his friends make up after the school musical, and they head to the carnival in support of Simon. He rides the Ferris wheel alone for a really long time, but right before his last ride, Bram asked to ride. He confesses to being blue and the two kiss on the top of the Ferris wheel. Simon's life is still normal, except now he has a sweet boyfriend who he loves. It's so cute. It's so cute. This is a 2018 film written by Elizabeth Berger and Isaac Aptaker, who also wrote How I Met Your Father, Love, Victor, which is a TV adaptation of this movie, and a few episodes of This Is Us. So that's where we get that heartfelt, sincere moments from. Yes. (laughs) This was also directed by Greg Berlanti, who is a big-time producer of shows like Superman and Lois, Riverdale, and The Flash. My goodness. <laughs> Mercedes, yeah. there's a lot to unpack with this movie. Yeah, and it's also based on a novel called Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky mm-hmm. Albertalli. You know I love any good adaptation, so then I love that it was adapted into a TV show, too. Oh, love Victor looks so good, I need to watch it. Exactly, me too. Gotta add to my watch list. So I think um, a moment that we all can agree was a, a beautiful scene 
is the scene between Jennifer Gardner and, and Simon after he comes yes. out. So Jennifer Gardner's exhale speech wasn't actually originally written into the film. Jennifer asked for a scene where she just really connects with Simon and her and the director work together to comprise a scene. Oh my God, Marissa, it's I It's my cried. favorite scene. Oh, it's- I sob during that scene. I really do love it. Also, too, there's something really beautiful about, I mean, this scene reminded me so much of the scene between the dad and Timothy Chalamet's character in Call Me By Your Name. At yes. The end. Yeah. It's like when parents are accepting and just the honestness and the realness that comes out from it, I just, I keep crying every time one of these scenes happens. I yeah. keep crying. <laughs> and it feels like, I mean, acceptance is just like the bare minimum, but they go above with these little monologues and conversations they have. Mm-hmm. Where it's so much unconditional support, mm-hmm. and that is so beautiful to see. It, it really is. It really is. <laughs> yes. And this was the first major studio film about a gay teenage romance. And its success has played a large role in why so many more queer romances are being turned into films by larger studios now. And it's so exciting to see. I know, like, so many have been coming out in the last, since 2020 onward. So just in the last couple of years. And on so many streaming sites. So there's an abundance yeah. now. Exactly. So I actually read that Sean Mendez, of all people, was invited to audition for the role of Simon. Could you imagine how different this movie would have been if Sean Mendez was in it? I mean, I've always thought that him and Nick Robinson look similar. And I didn't know if it was just because they're like two white boys or like, you know, but like. I always thought they looked kind of similar. Sean Mendes is such a sweetheart, too. Oh, my God. Yeah, but I just feel like, I don't know, Nick Robinson gives me high school vibes more than Sean Mendes does. I think it's the tattoos. Yeah, because Sean Mendes was on Vine. He wasn't in high school. (laughs) (laughs) Do you remember where you were the first time that you watched this movie? Yes, I watched it in theaters when it came out. It came out my last semester of undergrad ever. So I was in the middle of writing my undergrad thesis about rom-coms at the time. And I was so stoked for this movie because what I was writing about was really different rom-coms, like the top grossing rom-coms in different decades, what they speak to, like the time that they were made, but also how consistently white and straight and cis they were. So in my conclusion, I got to talk about this movie and like different new rom-coms in like I call it the rom-com renaissance of like the late 2010s, early 2020s of now that we're seeing so much more diversity on screen and also behind the camera. Like you can't have these stories be told without diversity in the writer's room and behind the camera. So I don't know. I think it's really exciting. I So every time I think of this movie, I think of my thesis and like that time of life. It's so sweet. Yeah. As someone who works in the entertainment industry and has been for the past eight years, I think something that bothers me about Hollywood is that they refuse to do it until they see that it works. Yeah. It's like you can't know if it works unless you try it. And so many people are scared to try it. And that's why it's so important that we have people in power, like people who are in control, to give these smaller creators or these people who have unique out-of-the-box ideas a chance because it can work. People are dying for something fresh and new and authentic. And that's exactly what this movie is. I just wish, you know, more people had the opportunity to showcase their unique thing, you know? Yes. Um, <laughs> you know what's really sad is this movie only came out four years ago, and I still have yeah. no idea where I was. <laughs> I oh. think I... Okay, well, you were in L.A. I was in L.A., yes. You're 100% correct. I was... Okay, I think I saw this movie because at the time I was working at the Network Stars, And we used to have these meetings where we would discuss what we were watching. And I think one of the execs or one of the other assistants watched this and loved it and spoke about it in the meeting. And I think I saw it on a streaming platform. But that's a huge maybe. I literally cannot remember, but I have seen this movie before (laughs) this last time I just watched it. What else were you doing that year? Okay, so like I said, I was a senior in college. I was 22. This was my last semester, so I was really just, like, trying to get through it, finish my thesis, Mm -hmm. find the motivation to finish that thing. And I was also deciding on a grad program. So when this came out, I was deciding between a school in New York, a school in L.A., and a school in London. And I was like, well, I have family in L.A. I've been to London a lot. Let me go somewhere I've never been. (laughs) That's how I decided NYU. So this happened at the same time. I love so that. it was it was an exciting time for Miss mm-hmm. Heather. You know, <laughs> something I really love about this movie is the beautiful friendships cultivated between the friend group, right? All four of them. Yeah. And, you know, 2018 was an interesting year for me for friends because that was the year that I decided to choose myself. So 
That year, I had a crush on a person who used to be my friend. His name was Matt. And I was just, like, so in love with him. I remember I got slightly intoxicated at a bar one time and, like, <laughs> fell asleep on him. And he put his arm around me. And, like, my friend my friend just happened to take a picture. This happened twice, right? And my friend just happened to take a picture. And I would just look at those pictures all the time because I thought we looked so cute together. And just looking back, I have no idea why I liked him so much because he just treated me so poorly. So poorly. I remember I went out with him and another guy friend of ours. And it was like 2 a.m. And I turned around for a second. I don't remember what I was doing. I turned around. And when I turned back around towards them, they are both running into an Uber, like literally sprinting. And they jump into an Uber and they drive off. This was 2 a.m. in Venice. They literally just left me in the middle. Like no one was out. No one was there. It's Venice, which means there's a lot of like unhoused people and it wasn't very safe. And they didn't even text me to see if I got home safe or anything. I remember he, like, did not say happy birthday to me because he was like, if everyone's saying it, it's not as special. And I was like, what? It was so annoying, too, because for his birthday, I would go all out. I'd get him balloons. I got him, like, this giant cupcake and, and, and all of this stuff. And it was just so ridiculous because he was part of a bigger friend group that I was part of. So I saw him all the time. And that was the time I was like, you know what? I don't need someone like this in my life. I... I'm going to separate myself. That started the crumble of like me losing that entire friend group. But it honestly was for the best because I really don't need people like that in my life. I just want to say that because like I said, Nick has such loving and supportive friends in this movie. And I just want to give listeners, anyone who's struggling with friendships right now, like choose yourself. Honestly, you need to choose yourself because then you will attract people who will also choose you as well and be there and support you and love you. And those are the type of friends that we need in our lives. Yeah. And make you feel good. Yeah, oh. exactly. <laughs> exactly. An annoying guy. Oh, <laughs> the worst. He's the worst. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for the rom com Hall of Fame. But yeah. of course, Mercedes, we have to roast this movie as much as we love it. We have to roast it. And I'm curious, I want to hear your thoughts. I have some thoughts. You have some thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be surprised if you did it. I will start off. Obviously, the homophobic jokes from the students at school were just so disgusting and yeah. vile. And also, the blackmailing that Martin does is so truly horrible, and he is just such a terrible person and so annoying. And to out someone is not only, like, a terrible thing to do, but also just, like, an act of violence. Yeah. And he didn't face any consequences for doing something so harmful and so cruel. And luckily, this film has a very precious ending because that whole thing could have gone completely in so many different directions. Yeah. And that's just so upsetting. And also, Simon's friends bother me. I don't know if you felt this way, but like they use his incredibly traumatic experience of being outed. And it turned it on, like, how it affected them. And I understand he lied. What he did wasn't good either. But I just didn't like how selfish they were. And so they were just kind of annoying from the beginning. I did not vibe with them. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I get that. You know, this is actually kind of going to be a interesting roast for me. And I'm curious if you agree or if any of our listeners agree. So I actually think his family dynamic, while it was really nice and loving, was just so unrealistic. The popular jock who marries the cheerleader, the prom queer, whatever she was, and then Mm -hmm. they they didn't peak in high school, like that whole thing. I feel like it was toxic because we know how hard it is to come out for people. And it just made it seem like your family has to be perfect and so loving and so caring for you to come out and receive that type of love and support that he did. And I guess I just don't want other people seeing this unrealistic family setup and feeling like they can't come out because their families aren't like that. Like their family isn't reflective of who they were. Also, too, I feel like family is a very sore subject for me, if you can't tell. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt like it kind of portrayed this unrealistic. Like this is how it has to be in order for you to receive the same response that he did from his parents. And a lot of families weren't like that. I totally agree with you. And I think a huge part of this movie that I think the flaws come from is that it tried to be so general in the Mm -hmm. story. We don't really know anything about Simon. And I think that's intentional Mm. because then it appeals to a general audience, which also includes a straight audience. And I think his family is also supposed to be this very general hashtag all American type of family. But actually what that means is white and rich. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I don't know, like a very nuclear family. I read a lot of comments saying that this is a gay romance almost for a straight viewer Mm. in the way that we don't know a lot about him and his personality. We see him struggle a lot and we learn about his friendships and his family 
but not necessarily about him beyond his sexuality. Mm -hmm. Simon is an observer this whole movie, and his sexuality becomes his entire character arc. Like, what what else do we know about him? We know he likes, like, indie music, Mm -hmm. and we know he has, like, good friends and supportive family. And other and like he's in a musical, but we don't know like if he enjoys that. Like we don't know like any of his other likes or dislikes. And we I don't know. It just seems like I know every like all of his friends way better than I know him. Mm. I think that goes to what you were saying of just like it feels really unrealistic. And I don't know if they kept this very generalized story. I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah, it no, just it feel feels like, like something's missing. <laughs> yeah, it feels like honestly, this is Hollywood's attempt at making a a gay rom-com, right? Yeah. Like, they have to start off with having this rom-com that has two gay leads, but they have to make it for a straight audience. Yes. And I feel like since this was the very first time this was ever done, they took this approach to kind of be more careful and cover their asses, essentially, at the, at the end of Definitely. the day. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like you could, you could see that. Just as someone who's worked in development for so long, that's the approach that they had to take. They could not just go from nothing to completely left field uh, with the storyline. So I guess I get it from like a development standpoint, but also too, I do feel like we are getting those stories where we learn more about the characters and we learn more about the people. Like, I mean, I will keep referring to Call Me By Your Name because it's what, like Luca Guadagnino is one of my favorite directors. It's such a beautiful movie. Such a beautiful movie, but I feel like you do learn more about, you know, the characters in there. And so this just needed to be, unfortunately, this had to kind of be like the sacrificial lamb of the gay rom-com genre, right? Yeah, this definitely was like the stepping stone. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that I kind of wish I got to see more of Simon's joy. Like, I wish I got to see him more happily in love. And I know that you love a love story where you get to see the couple together. I wanted that so badly because so much of this movie is almost anxiety inducing because you're like I'm holding the secret with you through this whole movie and I want you to like be able to like talk and like be yourself and like be in love yeah. and th- that's like so stressful because you just see him struggle so much and stress about this and dwell on it like it takes over his whole life I just would love to see him happy and like himself more I hear you and you know speaking of secrets for say I'm curious Have you ever had a time where you were just terrified to tell someone something because of how they would perceive you? I don't know. Like, nothing big. I never think I have secrets, but then everyone tells me I'm a very private person. So I'm like, I feel like I'm sharing so much with everyone. And then other people are like, no, you don't tell us anything. And I'm like, what am I not? I don't know. Do you? Yeah. (laughs) Dating has always been very hard for you because I'm still a virgin. And a lot of guys perceive that as a red flag. Mm -hmm. And I remember... Back in 2017, I went on three dates with this guy, which was like the most I've ever gone on dates with anyone ever. And we started, we got on the topic of like past relationships and and things like that. And I was just terrified because I knew, Mercedes, I knew we were never going to see each other again after I told him I was still a virgin. And I did and never saw him again. And it's just always kind of been, it was always something I was scared to talk about. And then I just thought it was so stupid because I was like, how are you going to judge my entire personality and my entire being based off of how many people I have or have not had sex? And so I actually started speaking out about it a lot more. And it's become, you know, like part of my identity, but also something that like I'm not I'm not embarrassed by. I'm not shy about anymore. And I've actually encouraged other people to start talking about, you know, how it feels to be a late bloomer, to still be older and a virgin, things like that. And so that was a really big thing for me that I was always scared to to tell guys because I knew like <laughs> history kept repeating itself. Like I would never see this person again if they thought yeah i hate these people it's like <laughs> none of their business what you do with your body anytime ever you know and it's like oh yeah you should be so lucky to know what <laughs> who i am and this part of me like are you serious oh my god that bugs me so much because obviously none of these things are anyone else's business if people don't want to share it with them that frustrates me so much oh my god and i like love how you've claimed it and you do you voice it and you put it out there and you own it as something that you take a lot of pride in i'm so impressed by that and i love that <laughs> thank you thank you it's been a long time coming And I just hope anyone else who is struggling with, you know, something that they're scared to share with people, I hope that they find that inner strength in them because it is there. 
it is 100% there. Yeah. I think we said is we have the we have the same scene that we love. A quote from, right? So that whole exhale scene from Jennifer Garner is mm -hmm. amazing. And I think two moments that really stuck out to me from that monologue was when she says, being gay is, is your thing. There are parts of it you have to go through alone. I hate that. Like that really that was really something. And I also felt like when she said, and you get to exhale now, Simon. You get to be more you than you have been in, in a very long time. I love that. I cry so much during this scene. Every time I watch this movie, and I've seen it a few times, and it just, it's such a loving moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad Jennifer Garner was like, no, we need a scene like this because it's so true. And honestly, she feels like the perfect white mom to put in a movie like this. <laughs> I don't know. Like she's I was like, yes, you are so sweet and wholesome. And like, you're great in this role. Her whole monologue just feels like a hug. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also like a great thing for allies to watch. Mm -hmm. Like us. Yeah, that's how you give space and that's how you show support and love. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So, question of the day. If this popped up on your Tinder feed, would you swipe left or would you swipe right? I swipe right. I mean, this movie tells the sweetest story, and I kind of describe it as a coming-of-age queer you've got mail with a Sleepless in Seattle-esque ending. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I love that. I love the whole idea of bonding over chat and email and because it's like little love letters. And then, like, the whole meet me on the Ferris wheel. Oh, my God. I was like, <laughs> this, this is how you get me with those tropes like we've said it's done a lot for showing how successful and necessary these stories are mm -hmm. and how important it is for major studios to produce them so they can be easily distributed and more accessible to wider audiences because it's not like these stories weren't being told it's mm -hmm. just that indie films don't really have the budget to distribute widely to people so a lot of people don't see them yeah. And so this is why it's important. And now I'm so happy that they're so they're on so many streaming sites. It's such a good stepping stone. Hollywood desperately needs more queer voices in the mm -hmm. mainstream, you know? Yep. And it's definitely made its impact in the last few years because now we've seen on multiple streaming sites, we've seen so many, like the half of it crush on Hulu. Anyone watch Crush? A Fire Island comes out today while we're recording. And the upcoming Billy Porter movie, Anything is Possible, that trailer just dropped yesterday, and I'm so excited for it wow. it has a black trans teenage girl lead and i am just so excited for like all of these new stories to come because i just love watching people fall in love yeah <laughs> all people it's nice watching all people fall yeah in love. yeah you're right i'd swipe right i'd swipe this movie is just incredibly heartfelt and i find it really difficult not to cry through some parts like the scene with Nick and his dad, I cried. It was so, it was so good. I just, I loved it. <laughs> and the grinder comment. We can yeah. make a grinder account together. And he's like, this Facebook for gay people. Yeah. like, sir. <laughs> That's not what it is. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome to Couples Therapy. Mercedes and I just like to give advice for the couples on how they can improve their relationship. Exactly what we were saying before. I really hope Simon takes his mother's advice and just exhales. And remember that it's okay to breathe now. I feel like when you have been holding on to something for so long, your breathing patterns are regulate because you've just been holding your breath for so long. So I just hope he remembers to breathe in and out. That's all I hope for Simon. Oh, so poetic, Kendra. <laughs> oh, beautiful. I say Simon, he learns a lot through this journey, but I think the main thing he needs to focus on is honesty with himself and the people in his life that he cares about. I think that was his main trip up through this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and he learns a lot through this whole journey, and it's so nice to see. What do you think his love language is? I think it's words of affirmation. Hello, they fall in love through email. <laughs> this is You've Got Mail for Teens. <laughs> love that. Yeah, I would say he received words of affirmation through Blue, but from yeah. his friends, it's definitely quality time. Like, his friendships yeah. are really special, and you can tell when they're together how they're all so genuine and happy. And so mm -hmm. I think it's a combination of both for, for me. So, of course, we're saying is we got we to gotta ask ourselves, do you think this couple lasts in five years? Of course not. This is a sweet <laughs> high school love story, and we can leave it at that. Because you know what? 
that grand gesture at the end will make such a good story for the rest of your life. You don't yep. need this relationship for the rest of your life. You can have the story. 100%. Yeah, I agree. No, I think it's really hard to stay with the first person you meet after something like coming out. And I feel like that coupled with the fact that it's high school, they're both going to be very different people. But I do hope that they can remain friends, at least. They share a unique and special experience of both coming out at the same time to the world and with each other. So I hope that they remain friends and they, they remain staples in each other's lives. Yes. <laughs> All right, Mercedes, heartthrob. Tell me who you would take home to meet your friends and family. I would take Bram because slash blue. Yeah. He is just like through his emails, you can tell he's so sweet and kind. And even mm -hmm. in person, I wish we got to see more of him on screen with Simon. Because yeah. when they're playing like beer pong at the party and just like hanging out, like he's just so kind mm -hmm. and he just seems so great. And on the Ferris wheel, when he's like, Are you disappointed it's me? That like crushes <sighs> my little heart because I was like, Oh, that's so teenager. Like, <laughs> please like me type of thing. Oh, it just melts my heart. He is very cute. He is very cute. Okay. You know, I always like to throw a wrench here. Uh, I'm going to say, <laughs> oh, you God, Mr. Worth, the principal, because, <laughs> because, because I just have such a big love for Tony Hale, the actor yeah, who plays him. Hilarious. A movie I fell in love with him through is this, is this rom-com, actually, that we should, it's super indie. I'm pretty sure a lot of people haven't heard of it. It's called Happy Thank You More, Please. And Added to the list. everyone needs to watch that movie. But this man has a very special place in my heart because of like, he has this kind of big like declaration of love scene in the movie. And it is so beautiful. It is to end all declaration of love scenes in every single movie. Like, it's just so beautiful. Oh so, my goodness. I need to watch because yeah. I've only ever seen him in Veep and Arrested yeah. Development, which are very <laughs> different types yeah. of characters. He has more of a leading role in this movie, which is which is nice. And like, I just, I love to uh, give, give as much screen time to Tony Hill as possible, Hollywood, please. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good one. He's a good one. <laughs> All right. Mary Smooch goes, Mercedes. Okay, we have Simon. Bram and Martin. Who would you marry? Who would you smooch? And who would you ghost? Okay. I think I would marry Bram. I would smooch Simon and I would ghost Martin because he sucks. I was like, why don't they just write this character out? Yep. <laughs> we don't need him. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> He's so, but it's so funny too because like I remember in high school, so many freaking theater kids were like him. Like I was a theater kid and yeah. so many theater kids were like him just in terms of their personality and like, Stop like wearing shirts that people need to read. Like I love it. It's like unfortunately, <laughs> we all know someone like this kid. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's the saddest truth. <laughs> exactly. I think I would, oh, I think I would marry Simon. I would smooch Bram and I'd yeah, ghost Martin. Yeah. Everyone should ghost Martin, by the way. That's the only correct answer in this scenario. <laughs> Literally. He's the worst. Yeah. He's the worst. Ghost him from the movie. <laughs> Before we wrap it up, listeners, we always love to bring in a pop culture moment. And I just have to say, Josh Jamal is how you age when you are unproblematic. That man is like almost 50 years old and just a freaking silver fox. Like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I think I've been watching him since I was, I used to watch him in the show like Las Vegas. And that was like back in like 2004. I've been watching. How were you watching Las Vegas? Weren't you like 10? Oh, I used to watch <laughs> whoppers. I used to watch a lot of, I was a very precocious child. I used to watch a lot of things that were way out of my age range. I would rush home every day to watch Passions and Days of Our Lives. Those are like my two songs. Oh, my God. Every day. You're Love like that. my Nana. <laughs> <laughs> yes 100 percent, i am <laughs> oh my gosh so my pop culture little tidbit is i mentioned this earlier but if you want another teen queer romance if you want a double feature with love simon then definitely check out crush on hulu it came out i'm pretty sure april maybe march it is such a fun watch and i'm so excited for the day we get to discuss that movie it is awesome this would be such a good double feature because i think it does like so many things right that we kind of had a little bit of criticisms about this yeah absolutely okay adding it to the watch list again super overwhelmed with all of the things i have to watch but i'm gonna try so many things i'm gonna try <laughs> i'm literally just not gonna go out for like the next month and just sit and watch everything <laughs> <laughs> The listeners, we want to know what your thoughts are. What did you think of Love, Simon? Did you feel like his family dynamic was realistic or unrealistic? Do you have a, a super tight-knit friend group like he did? Make sure to slide to our DMs at Meet Cute. Again, I'm Kendra. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Ken10Hollywood. Yes, and I've been Mercedes. You can find me at MercedesGV11 on Twitter, IG, and TikTok. And if you're looking for new rom-coms, follow Meet Cute wherever you listen to podcasts and follow Meet Cute on socials everywhere. Bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. Hi. 
Hi, me cuties. We're so excited to let you know that you can now binge our newest series, Influence, exclusively and ad-free on Wondery+. Plus. It's Meet Cute's modern adaptation of Jane Austen's Persuasion, and we know you're going to love it. 